بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله النبي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين قاسية مبقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الله وأكرمني بنوب الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزاء ونعوذ منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله We have to fear to study Imam and Wilaya In the series on Aqaid, this is the third book So we had first lessons on Islamic beliefs Then we had Islamic belief system So this is Lessons on Imama and Wilaya. This book first was conceived as a series of lectures on Imama and Wilaya that I gave to a group of youths, mostly actually from the Khoja community who had come to Qom. And then we worked on them more and published them as eight papers in Message of Thakalain journal. Then we worked further, especially uh, very much tried to document the hadith uh, directly from its sources. For this particular book, many of hadith are from our Sunni brothers' sources because uh, if we just quote from Shia sources then some people may think that because Shia believe in Imama so this is natural that the Shia believe in this thing but we bring also references from Sunni sources and we have checked ourselves those sources uh, therefore Inshallah, you would find this book useful if you want to use this hadith yourself also. We will try to study this book quickly because we want also to expand on Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajuhu Sharif. As you know, Imam is chosen by the Shia theologians as one of the principles of their faith. In lessons on Islamic beliefs, the first session we talked about how these principles were historically chosen. We don't have any ayah in the Quran or hadith that says Usul din are three or five, uh, whether it's those three, Tawheed, Nabuva, or Ma'ad, or those five that we call Usul Madhab, according to Shia. There is nothing that only mentions those five or those three. But these are some fundamental doctrines. Tawheed, Nabuva, and Ma'ad are shared by all Muslims and indeed in a general way by all believers in Abrahamic faith. They all believe in Tawheed, they all believe in prophethood in general. Maybe about a specific prophethood and Nabubbatul Khasa, of course there are differences. We believe the Prophet Muhammad was prophet. They may not share this. But they share with us the idea of prophethood and revelation and we have common history of prophets from Adam up to Musa alayhi salam we share with other Abrahamic uh, faith even after Musa alayhi salam just from Isa alayhi salam this agreement starts between Jews and the rest and then uh, when it comes to Prophet Muhammad it is only believed by Muslims so, those three are 
very important because they are shared by all Muslims and by all believers in God. These two, Imam and Adl, we said before, and I don't want to expand on it now, but you can refer to the first lecture of Lessons on Islam. We said that these are historically chosen. Because there were debates, lots of debates, on how to understand divine justice. No Muslim denied divine justice, but how to understand it, how to interpret, that was the question. So Shiite and Mu'tazilites both had some type of understanding which was based on intrinsic goodness and badness, and rational goodness and badness, husn and abali, as we said. So they focused and highlighted Adil. Another thing is Imam. And this is highlighted by the Shia. Not because others didn't believe in Imam. Like Adl. It's not that others didn't believe in Adl. But there was a special understanding of Adl that the Shia had and Mu'tazilites had and the rest didn't have. Imam is something that is accepted by all Muslims. Except very a small fraction. Khawarij are the people who are known that they deny Imam. According to Khawarij, there is no need for leaders who would succeed the Prophet. As you know, they used to say, in al illa lillah. They used to misinterpret and misuse this uh, correct and Quranic principle that rule only belongs to God. Imam Ali said, Kalimatu haqlan yuradu biha al-batil. This is a word of truth, but they have used it for falsehood. They want to say, rule belongs to God, and then it means that we don't need a ruler. We don't need imam. We don't need, but we say, rule belongs to God, and God decides who would be implementing the laws of God. So, Khawarij don't believe in imam. But other groups of Muslims, Sunni, Shia, they believe in Imamah. And inshallah we will explain later what does Imamah mean for them from a technical point of view. So, why then Shia highlighted this? If others also believe, the same as Adl. Because Shia have some specific understanding of Imama, which is not shared by every Muslim. They believe in Imama not just as a political position. They believe in Imama as a divine position that comes by divine appointment. God should choose whom he wants to be the Imam. So, we will talk about it inshallah later. So, Shia had a specific interpretation of Imama and they wanted to highlight it. Plus, they found that if they want to identify themselves, if they say we believe in Tawheed, it's not enough. If they say we believe in Tawheed and Nubuwa and Ma'ad, it's not enough. If they say we believe in Tawheed and Nubuwa and Ma'ad and Adl, again, it's not enough. But if you believe in Tawheed and Nubuwa and Imama and Adl, then your identity is known. Because there is no one other than Shia who highlights and emphasizes on all these five with the understanding that, inshallah, we will mention. So, this is the first point. The second point is how much Islam emphasizes on Imam. For the time being, just we say leader after the Prophet, successor to the Prophet. Later we will have technical discussion. There is a hadith that I am sure you have heard 
many times. Man mata wa lam ya'rif imam zamanahi mata mitata jahili. The one who dies without knowing imam of his age dies a type of death which is similar to those who died in the time of Jahiliya, in the age of ignorance. This hadith is actually narrated by Sunni and Shia Muslims. If you look at page 13 in the footnote, footnote 2, I have quoted from Allah Majlisi Rahmatullah Alai, who is a master and expert in the field of hadith. He says, Both Shia and Sunni have narrated this mutawatiran. It's mutawatir. What does mutawatir mean? Mutawatir means something that has been so frequently narrated in every generation that would leave no chance of this being fabricated or being mistake. So imagine if between us and Rasulullah, if it is 30, 40 generations of narratives. If among Ashab, who are the first generation, then Tabi'un, those who have not seen the Prophet, but they have seen the companions. And then third generation, fourth generation up to our time. If this hadith has always been narrated by many people, this is mutawat. But if it is narrated by two, three people in the first generation, but after that becomes 50, then 50, 50 is not enough. It has to be always 50, 50, 50. Because in the chain of narration, if even one generation is weak, the whole chain becomes weak. It's logical. Yeah? If 1,000 people say something, you cannot say because too many people say it's true. You have to see whether these 1,000 people have taken this also from 1,000 people or this have taken from one person, two persons. If 1,000 people quote something from two persons, it means that two persons are saying this. Okay, so mutawatir means in all generations we have so many people that there is no doubt about authenticity of this hadith. This hadith, hadith of Ghadir, these are the hadith that are mutawatir. Okay, there are different versions of this hadith also. One is man mata la ya'rifu imamahu. Mata mitata jahil. The one who dies while he doesn't know his imam. Has died death of ignorance. Another version is man mata walam ya'rif imam zamanahu. So instead of la ya'rifu imamahu, is walam ya'rif imamahu. There is and here. The one who dies without knowing or the one who dies and doesn't know. Doesn't change the meaning. Another version is Man Mata Walaysa Lahu Imam. Instead of saying the, the one who dies and doesn't know Imam, says the one who di uh, dies and doesn't have Imam. What does it mean doesn't have imam? You may say we all have imam whether we believe or not. Allah has appointed an imam for us. But there is imam 
appointed by God, but he is not your imam unless he is your leader. Man mata wa laysa lahu imamun means the one who has not selected and chosen his imam. He's not following anyone, although imam is there. Just to have imam does not save you from ignorance. Okay? So this version says, Man mata wa laysa lahu imam. And we have given references. I don't want to take your time. Uh, all the references are here for each version. Another says, Man mata bighayr imam. The one who dies without imam. So, these are similar. Another one says, Man mata wa laysa fi onuqhi bay'atun. The one who dies without having on his neck the allegiance means he has not paid allegiance to the Imam of his time. Mata mitatan jah. So this hadith is universally narrated and accepted. Question: Why, if someone dies without knowing Imam of his age? He is like the people who died in the age of Jahiliyyah. You know, the age before Islam is called Jahiliyyah, yeah? The age of ignorance. Why they are like the people who were in that time? They may be Muslims. Even they may be Shia. Suppose someone who has believed in the previous Imams, but has not believed in the current Imam. But still we say, Mata Mitatan Jahiliyyah. Why? What does it mean? Let's see what is Jahiliyyah. Jahiliyyah means you have no direction. Who is Jahil? Jahil, ignorant, is not the one who doesn't know only. Maybe he is actually very educated, but still can be Jahil. Jahil is the one who doesn't have wisdom, doesn't have rationality. The person who either doesn't know at all, or even if he knows, he is not well oriented. If you are traveling from one point to another point, and there are people that you see, they have lost the direction. They are just going around or going backward. We say these people are not well oriented. They don't have direction. So, because Imam is the one that gives us direction, if we don't have Imam, we are like a people who are in the time of Jahiliyyah, because they had also no direction. They were confused, they were misguided. So this is one point. The second point, why so much emphasis on knowing Imam of your age? This is a very, very important point. This is a dynamic issue because you need direction in all generations. Let me give you a simple example. If you are traveling and it is 1000 kilometers Is it enough that you know direction for the first part of the trip, or half of the trip, or even 70% of the trip? No. You should have direction from beginning to the end. Since Imam is the one who gives us direction in every moment of our life, if we don't have Imam, means we don't have direction 
from this point on. Maybe we have already made some success. Alhamdulillah, we believe in Prophet. Alhamdulillah, we believe in, for example, first Imam or second Imam or sixth Imam. But that's not enough. How you get your direction today? Who is your leader today? To whom you have to answer today? For whom you have to work today? So we need direction all the time. And this shows that unfortunately our understanding of the role of Imam Mahdi Sharif for most part is not adequate. Why? Because our understanding of Imam and our relation with Imam and how we should respond to Imam and work for Imam unfortunately is not dynamic. I ask you a question and I say this with humility and just for the sake of thinking together. For some of us, I don't say how many, if we had 12 Imams and all of them were martyred, but we knew that Imam Mahdi is going to come, or now that Imam Mahdi is not martyred but is in Ghaiba and he is going to come, what difference it makes? If we didn't have Imam Mahdi alive, and we just had 12 imams, we know everything about the father, mother, date of birth, everything. But, for example, Imam Mahdi also was killed. And then we say in the time of Zuhur, like when Isa alayhi salam comes, Imam is also returning. Of course, Isa is descending, he would be returning. In some lectures I have explained what is the difference between Nuzul and Ruju. What difference would have made to our life? If you say, we love Imam Zaman, okay, we love Imam Hussein, we love Amir al -Bumani. If you say, you know, we do, you know, Ziyarat, Tawassul, okay, so you do for other Imams, maybe more. What we are getting from having a living Imam that we were not able to get if Imam was killed. This is a big question for the Shia. I think we need to strengthen our relation with Imam al-Islam. He is in occultation, but he is in charge. And we should receive direction from him. This direction, of course, may not come a straight, there is hierarchy, there are methods to understand the will of Imam, but we have to know what Imam wants from us. In Dua we say, O oh Allah, please include us among the people who implement his commands. al mumtathilina le awamirah the people who implement his commands. So he has commands that we have to implement. And even more, as ila iradati. Those who precede, they have competition. Who would be first to implement his avamir? So, sorry, irada, his will. Al mumtathidina le avamir. What is the difference between Amr and Irada? Command and will. What's the difference? Sometimes I am thirsty and I say to my child, my son, bring me water. 
He says, come on. I say, bring me water. Sometimes I am thirsty. I am coughing. But I don't say anything. I want water. But I, thought I feel shy or I want to see how much he loves me and cares for me. I don't say anything. There is erada for water. I want water. But I don't command. Or maybe I am not here. I am traveling. My son knows that I want the home to be in good condition, to look after his brothers and sisters. But I have not access to him to tell him. But he knows what I want from him. This is Erada. So we have to make sure that we implement Imam Mahdi's will even if it is not a spoken. And this is the beauty of Shia in the time of Ghaibah. They know what Imam wants from them without Imam telling them. Well, I'm sure you all have this experience. For example, I'm sure you know what your father in certain condition or your mother in certain condition expects from you. Or if you have had a teacher for some time, you know what your teacher wants from you. It's a matter of knowing and being familiar with someone. You can then understand what that person expects from you. So, we have to have such a close, intimate, and enlightened relation with Imam Mahdi Sharif that we can say we know Imam of our age and we are getting direction from him. Not that we know an Imam outside the history. It has to be dynamic, up-to-date, ongoing relation. It's very important. The relation that we have with Imam Mahdi is different from the relation we have with other Imams. Part of it the same, but it's not 100% the same. This is a special relation. It's a working relation. It's very important. Okay, so this is why it is said that it is like dying in the age of ignorance. Now, what is the meaning of Imam? Imam literally means leader. It can be leader of a community. It can be leader of prayer. It can be leader of Juma. It can be leader who is good. It can be leader who is bad. So the extent of his leadership and the type of his leadership are open, literally. The Quran, for example, says, وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَحْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا We made them leaders that guide people according to our command. Or they guide people towards our affair. But the same Quran also says, وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَدْعُونَ إِلَى النَّارِ We have also leaders who call people towards fire. So, Imam literally doesn't need to be necessarily good. Imam is leader. Good leader, bad leader. In Surah 17, verse 71, we have this famous ayah. يَوْمَ نَدْعُوا كُلَّ أُنَاسٍ بِإِمَامِهِ You know, on the Day of Judgment, people are first resurrected individually. Okay? We are not resurrected as community. We are resurrected individually. But then, 
people will be asked to assemble. How? They call them by the name of their Imams. Those who followed Ibrahim stand behind Ibrahim. Those who followed Musa stand after Musa. But those who followed Namrud and Fir'aun, they also stand behind their own Imam. So every group of people will join the person that they followed in dunya. In the lecture on collective nature of Wilaya, I have mentioned some hadith that, for example, Imam Sadiq salam says that this is the justice of Allah that he calls every group of people to join their Imam. We would join Rasulullah and you would join us. And then Imam Sadiq salam said, إِلَىٰ أَيْنَ تَرَوْنَ where do you think you will be taken? Because when they are assembled before Imam, then we have different communities, different groups. Then they go together towards heaven or hell. سِيغَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا سِيغَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَى جَهَنَّمَ زُمَرًا So, you are resurrected individually لَقَدْ جَئْتُمُونَ فُرَادًا But then, you are assembled when you go to hell and heaven you go as communities. Okay? So, community is not only for dunya. Community is for day of judgment and for inside also heaven. So, Imam Sadiq said, where do you think you will be taken? When groups have assembled and they are moving towards hell or heaven. And then he said, Three times he said, by the Lord of Kaaba, you will be taken towards heaven, inshallah. Just we need to make sure that when people are assembled, we are in the right assembly. <laughs> and that is what from now is decided. On the day of judgment only becomes visible. Otherwise, decisions are made here. Okay. So, this is the literal meaning of Imam. Leader. But technical meaning of Imam. What is technical meaning of Imam? According to Muslim theologians, Sunni, Shia, in the science of Chalam, al mulk al they say, Imam is the one who has comprehensive leadership in worldly and religious affairs. Imama, Imamate, is Ra'asatun Amma fi umur al-Din wa dunya To have comprehensive leadership in worldly and religious affairs after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Shia believe that this position, which is not only political, which is not only worldly, is decided by God. Because Imam has certain qualities that only God can know. And also because this is right of God to appoint. So two things. First, authority comes from God. It's right of Allah to appoint. Secondly, there are requirements that people don't know. How can people know whether someone is ma'asum or not? We know who is not ma'asum by seeing them making mistakes or committing sins. 
But we don't know who is Ma'asum. Do you understand the difference? Because if, even if someone for 10 years or in front of you has not made mistakes or committed sins, doesn't mean that he doesn't make mistakes or doesn't commit sins all the time. Allahu a'lamu haythu yaj'alu rasalatan. God knows where to put his message and mission. And we believe Imama is also a divine position. Like Nobova. Nobova is decided by God. Imama is also decided by God. Some people told the Prophet in the beginning of Islam, when the Prophet was under lots of pressure and Muslims were very little in number. So some tribes said to the Prophet, we believe in you, we support you, but we have a request. After you die, not now. After you die, someone from our tribe should be leader. And Prophet said, this is up to Allah. Al-amru illallah yaza'uhu haythu yasha. I have no authority. I don't want to deceive you because now I need you. I say, okay. And then when I am in power, I can say, you know, my decision has changed. No. It has to be clear for everyone that this is up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I have no authority here. So, we talked about the significance and necessity of Imam. We talked about literal and technical meaning of Imam. Inshallah, we continue with certain things about conditions of Imam and the role of Imam, inshallah, next week. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alamin.